You know, it takes quite a lot to stir me from the party food and Prosecco-induced coma that I tend to live in between Christmas and New Year, but The Matrix Resurrections is such a movie. Not because I'm here to sing its praises like Spider-Man No Way Home or anything. God no. This movie is quite literally the yin to No Way Home's yang. A boring, cynical, creatively bankrupt attempt to milk an old franchise for all it's worth, awkwardly retconning new ideas into a narrative that was already completed decades earlier, shot out by a past her prime filmmaker who doesn't seem to know why she's even making this film, and featuring a mixture of creaky middle-aged actors who can barely keep up with the action scenes, and a cast of forgettable young hopefuls that are about as memorable and distinctive as a late night visit to McDonald's. In short, The Matrix Redirections is everything I feared it would be in my trailer review and more. Much more. Damn, even I didn't predict just how shit this film would be. Anyway, as they probably said on the first day of shooting this thing, let's get this shit show over with so we can all go home. The movie kicks off with a straight up rehash of the iconic opening scene from the first film featuring a bunch of different actors, and if that alone doesn't clue you into the kind of shite you're about to experience, then all I can say is... Ignorance is bliss. It also introduces us to Gender Studies graduate, who I initially assumed was going to become the new protagonist, only for the script to gradually forget that she even exists. Also, what the fuck is this monstrosity? It looks like someone took a bird's nest, spray painted it blue and super glued it to the top of her heads. <laughs> So Gender Studies graduate suddenly comes face to face with Morpheus, who's now an agent for some reason, only he eventually became self-aware and decided he needed to find the one. <laughs> Fuck off, film. Anyway, once we've finished reminiscing about other better Matrix movies, it's time to reunite with Neo, who's now an older man working as a games designer for a respectable software company. It turns out the original Matrix movies were just a series of video games that Neo helped to develop 20 years earlier, and now his corporate overlords are pushing for a cash grab sequel. And if this is all coming across as desperately meta, like the movie's somehow trying to convince you it's on your side by mocking the very forces that led to its creation, Creation, then well, all I can say is That is the sound of inevitability. Neo is now a wealthy but unhappy man, living alone and unfulfilled in his expensive house, and yearning after a strangely familiar woman who goes to his local coffee shop each morning. He's also having trouble separating fantasy from reality, which forces him to take regular medication and visit a therapist played by Neil Patrick Harris and his foreheads. Hmm, I wonder if this could turn out to be significant later. A few minutes later. So this turns out to be significant when fake Morpheus and gender studies graduate confront Neo and persuade him to take the red pill. And wouldn't you know it, he wakes up in a sleeping pod. Again. Gets rescued by a hover ship. Again. Meets the crew. Again. And goes through a fighting program with Morpheus. Again. Then gets taken to Zion. Again. And the place is now led by a very old Naobi. Remember that extremely interesting character that everyone cared about from the previous films? Nah, me neither. The upshot of all this bullshit is that it's now 60 years since the events of the previous movie. The humans that were originally trapped inside the Matrix began to rebel against the programming, leading to an energy crisis and a civil war amongst the machines. But Neil Patrick Harris and his forehead eventually found a solution in the form of Neo and Trinity by resurrecting their dead bodies and plugging them back into the Matrix, and somehow their unfulfilled love for each other is what keeps the system functioning. <laughs> I don't fucking know, man, and I don't think Lana Wachowski really knows what she's trying to say here either. The point is that Neo wants her back, so he launches a mission to go back into the Matrix, find Trinity, and rescue her from Neil Patrick Harris in his forehead. Meanwhile, Gender Studies graduate and her forgettable friends have to sneak into the machine's city and retrieve her physical body without the machines finding out. So Neo does all of that bullshit and gives her a chance to leave the Matrix, but then Trinity's like, nah, it'll be fine. Then her husband Chad, and I really mean that, his name is literally Chad, gets just a little bit too pushy, so she's like, nah, it won't be fine. So Neil Patrick Harris in his forehead is like, right, you guys have to die. Then Agent Smith, who now looks, talks and acts like a complete different person shows up for some reason and saves the day. Then Neo and Trinity jump off a building and Trinity decides that she can fly now because she's also the one or whatever. <laughs> Fuck off, film. Then they go back to Neil Patrick Harris and his forehead, and Trinity beats him up, despite the fact that he's a fucking administration program who can't even feel pain. Then they have a good old laugh and fly off into the sunset while holding hands. 
Fuck off, film. The Matrix Regurgitations is a fucking ridiculous disaster of a film that reads like a piece of clumsy fanfiction written by a sweaty overweight teenager from 2004 who was bummed out that his favourite heroes got killed and wanted to bring them back to life again for more adventures. It accomplishes absolutely nothing except to undermine and reset everything that happened in the previous three movies. Once again, Neo's trapped inside the Matrix and has to be freed so that he can see the world for what it really is. Once again, humanity is enslaved by the machines and only a small force of resistance fighters can rescue them. Once again, there's hovercrafts and sentinels and a human city deep underground. And once again, a character has to discover their true power so they can fulfil their destiny. It doesn't just recycle the same concepts and philosophical ideas, it literally rehashes the same exact scenes, dialogue and characters beat for beat, sometimes even going so far as to overlay footage from the original movie. Instead of paying homage to its predecessors and cleverly working in iconic lines and character beats into a new story like, say, ooh, No Way Home, The Matrix Revelations just straight up copies stuff under the weak pretense that it's ironically making fun of cash grab sequels. Sorry Lana, but you don't get to have your cake, eat it, and mock the whole concept of cake at the same time. Back when I reviewed the trailer, I questioned why they would even make a sequel like this long after the Matrix bubble had burst, and what new ideas they could realistically bring to a narrative that already felt pretty complete. And after watching it from start to finish, I still can't fucking tell you, and I don't think Lana Wachowski can either. There's some pretty crude observations about modern culture being obsessed with feelings over facts, which I can almost imagine driving certain parts of Twitter into a frenzy of of impotent rage. Some extremely clunky dialogue about the red pills and how a person's life boils down to more than just a binary choice. Hmm, I wonder what that might have been influenced by. And if I was to be super forgiven, I'll acknowledge that the film's message that neither men nor women can reach their full potential alone, and that a union of the two is needed to maintain a balanced society, is actually a pretty fair one. And again, picturing the reaction to a premise like this really does put a smile on my face. But generally speaking, the film feels like a cynical repeat of the same process that drove The Force Awakens, reintroducing characters and events from previous movies and using them as a jumping off point to retell the same fucking story all over again. Like the romance between Neo and Trinity. I mean, as cool as they were individually, they weren't exactly electrifying as a couple, so it's kind of baffling that their love for each other now forms the core of this story. Their romance scenes always felt like two robots in attractive looking skin suits awkwardly trying to emulate human behaviour, and I can't say that much has changed 20 years later. Neither of them seem particularly invested in what they're doing, especially Carrie Ann Moss, who looks kind of embarrassed and uncomfortable with a script that tries to retcon Trinity into a messiah-like figure that the entire narrative now revolves around. I mean, isn't the point of the one that, well, there's only supposed to be one of them? Trinity was a great character all by herself, she didn't need all this extra crap built on top of her. I mean, I guess I should be kind of thankful that they didn't completely look Skywalker Neo in the process, but goddamn, the whole thing just smacked of a simple-minded need to make your two leads exactly as strong and capable as each other. We're not fucking children, we understand there's a bit of give and take to stuff like this. People don't have to have exactly the same levels of strength and capability to be considered equally important. I also had my doubts about the prospect of two actors in their mid-fifties being able to pull off physically demanding action scenes, and well, the Matrix recirculations pretty much confirmed my worst fears. Don't get me wrong, Keanu Reeves is always going to be awesome, but at 57, he just doesn't doesn't have the kind of speed and energy that made the Matrix's fight scenes so fucking incredible to watch. The fights here are slow and clumsy and lazily shot, and it feels like such a step backwards from the fast-paced, highly technical kung fu fights that we once had. Ultimately, the Matrix regenerations fails on just about every level possible. It fails to properly honour the past by leaving it well enough alone. It fails to tell a compelling new story or add new ideas to the world it created. It fails to establish interest in new characters or take old ones in a new direction. It fails to surpass the spectacle, energy and originality of a 20 year old film. And most of all, it fails to deliver a compelling reason for its own existence. The Matrix Retaliations is a film that never should have been made in the first place. And the more I think about it, the more I wish that it hadn't. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.